Minnesota Fine Vikings saved $5 million when a veteran left tackle Riley Reeve took a pay cut. Pay cut. So the Vikings now have $6.337 million in cap space. Uh, how is pretty Ricky Spielman and the Vikings? And they're going to make it rain. I don't know. Right. So here, here are five ways the Vikings should spend the Riley Reeve cap savings today. Number one, give it to Kirk. Because you, you know that when Kirk said, hey, uh, we, got, we got a little cap space. Hey, hey, hey Rick, we need to re renegotiate. Click. What? Ah, nah. All right. So really, number one, buy a guard. Buy a guard because as much as Denison and Kubiak want us to believe, okay, Elfline and Dakota Dozier, they're going to be your starting guards. They're going to be the Bash brothers. They're going to do that. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Maybe that was a real fool's go that Afadio Denebo was tweeting about. But now I don't believe it. You know, Josh Klein is the obvious choice here. Uh, we talked about last week uh, that we have on good authority that Josh Klein is uh, still part of the plan, still is uh, part of the Rolodex in case poop hits the fan. Poopeth is hitteth the faneth very soon uh solid last year uh first season uh with the vikings was a surprise cut uh is still currently a free agent and he's not gonna be on a roster for week one but it makes sense signing him after week one uh since he's a vested veteran you have that non-guaranteed contract and uh, frankly i think that dozier probably is gonna be the the guard sucking hind teeth so putting klein at left guard which he should have done last year with elf line and right guard as opposed to playing uh, footsie and just like clown farting around. Uh, but if Klein isn't in the mix, Ronald Leary, uh, Kevin Pamphile um, out there as well. Uh, there's, a, there's a suite of free agent guards are out there that makes sense. Uh, Larry Warford. Now, a lot of people are, are going to be like, about Larry Warford? Uh, he opted out. Yeah, that, that really flew under the radar. But Warford opted out uh, for COVID. Yeah. Uh, next up. Uh, number two way that the Vikings should spend that Riley Reef. Oh, that sweet, sweet cash savings. Damon, Snacks, Harrison. Five million bucks for Snacks. I'm, I'm okay with that. It's not even an entree. It's just Snacks, but it's good. Uh, so the Vikings are missing out that two-down run-stuffing defensive tackle with Michael Pierce out. As well as, frankly... I mean, Damon Harrison, you can make a good case, was the best run-stuffing nose tackle for the past five, six years. You know, came in with the Jets, signed with the Giants, uh, spent uh, last season with the Lions, last two seasons with the Lions, uh, and then uh, has just been chilling as a free agent. So the Lions clearly didn't want him back. It's like whatever, uh, and has been mulling over his options. There's been some talk about oh, maybe the Bucks were in, uh, maybe the Cowboys are in. Uh, and, yeah, just like Klein, he's not going to be on a roster week one. And also, frankly – I would have preferred paying snacks rather than Pierce, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but I, I think that it would make sense for the Vikings bring in uh, Harrison uh, on a, like a one-year, $5 million deal with a little bit of incentives. Uh, you can keep it under the cap and just fill that role that I don't believe that Stefan or Jaleel Johnson uh, or Armand Watts can do. They're all great at, at other stuff, but uh, being that two, three-body, two-gap, uh, run-stuffing nose tackle, that ain't it. Ain't it? Uh, as well as you got Marcel Darius out there, uh, who's been extremely good for the past couple of years, as well as uh, Stacy McGee, who had a, a flash in the pan big season, uh, and then um, and then he signed to Washington, a massive deal didn't work out, and then was recently with the pa uh, Carolina Panthers. Uh, number three thing the Vikings should do with all that sweet sweet cap space: extend Dalvin. So get the talks going again. I understand Delvin wants to be a good teammate, doesn't want this hanging over the team. But uh, if Spielman and his agent get together, uh, they can come to an agreement on number. It would make sense. Uh, Derek Henry and Joe Mixon taking 12 and a half and 12 million per year respectively complicates things a bit. Uh, I think Dalvin, if he maxes out on his potential and stays healthy, is certainly worth more than that. I think he's closer to McCaffrey than he is those two Jeronis. But the extension... All right, so here's the notes. Like, yes, the Vikings only have six point blah 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 uh, million in cap space this year, but the since uh, Dalvin does have his uh, final year as a rookie deal, the only thing that would impact this year's cap is that signing bonus. So pro rate over the duration of the deal, uh, and that's all that the Vikings have to take on for this year's cap. So they could do it as well as since they can get out under out from under a number of contracts next year, it is feasible and it's uh, not completely off the table. Uh, next up. Uh, number four way the Vikings should spend that sweet, sweet cap space. Mm. Save it for a rainy day. Now, the Vikings, even with the extra $5 million from Reef, are in the bottom 10 uh, in the league in cap space, as well as alien abductions happen all the time. Let's just say it. You know, Players that you bring on to your active 53-man rooster, either from the practice squad or as a street free agent, they do count, as well as players that go on IR. I mean, that's sunk. That is a sunk cost against this year's cap. Because look at the 2016 Vikings. 
All right, so obviously Teddy, that one hurt. He went on IR, but also you have Mack, you have Sharif, you have Tom Johnson, you have Matt Khalil, you had Andrew Sandejo, all went on IR. And all, you know, notably, the Vikings brought aboard Sam Bradford, who wasn't cheap, by the way. Wasn't cheap. Uh, as well as, that was when they were just uh, scrambling for bodies so badly that they brought the corpse of Jake Long in. You remember that? And they popped in Achilles. He was a former number one overall friggin' pick. Uh, he, uh, for a hot second... You had the number one overall pick in 2008, Jake Long, as well as the number one overall pick in 2010, Sam Bradford. Then they went 8-8, eight and eight, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, you do need to save some money. Otherwise, you're going to have to shuffle around some contracts, which again, hashtag cap is a myth, but also that it's a pain in the ass. It is. Uh, lastly, uh, thing number five the Vikings should do with the salary cap uh, from the Riley Reef pay cut. Roll over to 2021. Roll on one. Uh, so the Vikings currently have 189 million in cap liabilities for 2021. Uh, the cap could be stagnant, could hover around 200 million bucks. It could even go down. I don't see it going up uh, with the diminished revenues uh, from this 2020 COVID season. Uh, and yes, you can free up a lot of cap space, move on from Riley Reef, uh, Kyle Rudolph, Anthony Barr's contract is easy to get out from under as well as Shamar Stefan. But then look at the expenditures that you have on the horizon. A uh, possible Dalvin extension or franchise tag, Yannick Ngakwe extension uh, or franchise tag, uh, Anthony Harris uh, franchise tag, probably won't tag him again. Uh, Brian O'Neill's uh, going to be due for a long-term extension as well. So and there's going to be a lot of stuff. Even though $6 million bucks doesn't seem like a lot in the grand scheme of things, rolling over that available cap space right now wouldn't hurt. It would not hurt. But uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, what should the Vikings do with this uh this uh, just great windfall from this Riley Reef pay cut. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work? Pull some of the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.